Hi, this is Ogi with Visual Impact, and in this video, we'll go over the functionality and button layout of the Atom Mini Extreme ISO from Blackmagic Design. On the top left corner, we can see the mic and headphone controls, and when it comes to the inputs and outputs connectivity, on the back now we have two mic inputs, which use the familiar 3.5 stereo mini jack connection. And of course, we have the headphone output, which can be configured to monitor only specific inputs separate from the audio going out through the program mix. The Atom Mini Extreme switchers now have eight HDMI inputs, which is twice as more compared to the previous Mini and the Mini Pro models. And all of these inputs can accept video signals up to 1080p60. All inputs also have built-in standards conversion, allowing you to mix and match resolutions. We also get two HDMI outputs. Both the Mini Extreme and the Mini Extreme ISO get an extra HDMI output, which can be very useful as both can be configured in the Atom control software, with HDMI out one having a bit of extra special functionality, such as being a bit of a mini uh, switcher in itself, uh, because it does have dedicated switching capabilities with physical control buttons on the front uh, on the right side. This leaves the second HDMI output to be used for multi-view, for example, or anything else you might find more suitable for your purposes. Atom Mini Pro users will be familiar with the 12 volt power input with a locking connector which is quite handy. A gigabit ethernet port is also included for streaming. The extreme models now feature two USB-C outputs, which bring a lot more flexibility. One can be used to record to an SSD, and the other can be used to connect the Atom Mini Extreme to your computer to be used as a webcam input at the same time. Or alternatively, you can use the second USB-C uh, port to tether uh, to your mobile phone and use its data to stream. The top row of buttons is for the select bus, which allows you to internally route various inputs and effects to an upstream or a downstream keyer during a live stream. Moving down to the next row of buttons, we can see the dedicated camera controls for each HDMI input for compatible cameras such as the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K and 6K. Those include gain, shutter and focus adjustments. The next row down is reserved for the HDMI audio controls including audio follows video which can be enabled or disabled for each input. And of course the bottom row is reserved for the 8 source buttons for each HDMI input. Moving over to the right side of the switcher, we have dedicated picture-in-picture -picture buttons alongside 6 macro presets for various effects. Here we can also see plenty of transition and duration presets, as well as the HDMI Out 1 dedicated buttons for switching between program, preview and clean feed. The dedicated SSD record and start-stop livestream buttons are on the top right, and last but not least, on the bottom right, next to the 8 source buttons, we can also see the media player and super source buttons alongside the dedicated hard cut, auto transition and fade to black. And that was it for this video, I hope it was useful and do let us know in the comments below what features you are most interested in seeing us demo in future videos.